Hello! Welcome to the Call of Creativity podcast. My name is Caroline and this is episode 119. And of course, Binks is here as well because there's no episode without him. He is just the curious little bastard. Um, you can find me everywhere. It's Caroline. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ravelry, um, I think even on Clubhouse now. <laughs> um, but I usually only see the real names of people there. And of course I have a web shop, colorfulcreativity.nl. Talking about the web shop, I have filled up some gaps, um, brighten up your day on sock and um, nerd in the attic on smooth sock and on soft sock are back in stock and also uh, i am now dyeing up all the rainbow mini skeins because of course with pride month i totally forgot about that uh, not being queer <laughs> i don't i just don't think about june being rainbow month and everybody bought rainbows in uh, may <laughs> to be able to make a project in june um, so yeah, I'm a bit behind on that, but I'm dying up mini skeins at the moment, so fingers crossed the Rainbow Bride uh, will be back in stock soon. Right, um, this is a long overdue spinning update. Um, it was too much for the previous episode, so time to record it now. I don't have that much time because we have to go to the real estate agent later today and find out if there are biddings on my grand's house and if so, which we suspect there are, uh, how good or how bad they are. Um, so let me just start with finished things. And the first one I want to show you, where I hopefully also have a road to video vlog thingy um, to show you at the end of this video is this gorgeous skein of all about yarn bats um, here's the card all about yarn and it is, yeah it's focusing so, hand carded bats with Merino and Angelina, 2 times 50 grams. And I bought this at the Nitty Retreat two, three years back. Not sure if I bought it at the first one or the second one that I attended. Um, but hey, <laughs> it's very pretty. It's a thick and thin yarn and it is 100 grams and uh, 225 meters, so a basically DK-ish weight um, but there's definitely fingering and lace bits and worsted and bulky bits in there so it's a lot of everything but you can really see the sparkle and um, like I said I made a vlog with this and I hope I can uh, add it to the end of the video so you can see how I worked the bats and then um, made it uh, that it were uh, two ply and then I plied it and just how to split up a bat kind of video. So that's one skein and I'll admit I finished this all basically in May so it's not that it's very recent, <laughs> it's older stuff. But I just never got to showing it to you um, here is my loop bump, the bullseye bump, in the Earth Mother colorway. Here is the card. Loop. And the back side. And I got this fiber from my lovely friend Monique from Canada. And um, the fiber consists of merino, bamboo and tussa silk. There's no... Uh, yeah, numbers, so I don't know the exact combination. But this is it. And um, the bullseye bump, as I showed before, is like um, a self-striping bump of fiber. 
Um, it is a carded band and it annoyed me to bits. <laughs> um, I couldn't get a very nice consistent spin with it, but I do have that issue with carded stuff a lot. Um, again, very thick bits and thinner bits, so oh well. Uh, it's fine. It's spinning. It doesn't have. It's, it's hand spun. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I keep repeating that to myself, especially. <laughs> um, the carded band kept breaking, so I had to go in the bump and figure it out where it was. It's like you you lose your end in a uh, center pool ball, and <laughs> you're like. Where did it go? And you have to pull out a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, but in the end, it's a really pretty skein of yarn. And I'll open it up for you. It is a chain plied. So a three ply yarn. And that's a bit blown out. Yeah. It does match my dress currently pretty well. Um, there's brown, there is lilac, purple, darker purple, green, dark green. So lots of stuff going on in here. And I think this will make an amazing yoke in a sweater. The weight again is a DK weight. It is approximately uh, 130 grams and it came out at 274 meters. I wrote it out, out all down just before recording, so uh, I memorized it a bit. Um, it came down to 260 meters per 100 grams, so I think that's a fair DK weight. And I think it will look amazing with a natural color and then you have a yoke. It might be a bit much for the yoke, so one of the colors might fall off, but that's worth it, I think. I might have to order another natural DK from Carcraft. Might. Just might. I really love that yarn. And that's not all I spun. Um, I also have this gorgeous one, which was an absolute joy to spin. Um, gorgeous yellows, oranges bit of brownish, light brownish. And this is from Dutch Bull Diva and it was in my Tour de Fleece box from last year. And this is the Diva Poly. So Polworth and it is uh, the colorway Sun Kissed, which is pretty apt, I think. Um, I did a two ply on this and I managed to get a sport weight. Um, 100 grams, 325 meters, so again, pretty good, and I just split up the braid lengthwise and widthwise, and then I took one bit of each half and uh, spun it, spun both things the same order uh, to get the colors a bit matching not going for a barber pole because, well, there is barber poling in here, but because the colors are so nice to, together, it's not that really clown barf barber pole. And you can see, here's a little bit of overspun, thinner and a bit of thicker stuff going on. Hand spun. Doesn't have to be perfect. Still pretty. So those are the finished spinning objects and um, well, this was my Tour de Fleece box of 2020. I have not ordered a Tour de Fleece box for this year. I've been a good girl and I've been a very bad girl because I ordered just a lot of fiber. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am currently working on a spin and Nice and handy <laughs> with my e-spinner. I can just pull out the whole e-spinner and show it to you. It's all looking very grey. Um, 
I am spinning a, uh, I can spin a rainbow. And it was a gift I got from my lovely friend Angela. And I do not have the card or the fiber at hand. Uh, so I'll have to pop in the link down below so you can see where it's from and who dyed that. Basically, it's very thin rainbow strips of fiber and separately a uh, bit of gray. So I'm now spinning up the gray, so I have that done. And then there's uh, separate strips of rainbow colors. So a strip of yellow, a strip of orange, a strip of red. I'm going to split those in two so I can uh, make that into a chain plied mini skein and that times two and this one is going into a chain ply and then just by itself but that means that i could make two socks out of it um, the total of 75 grams so i'm thinking doing rainbow for the cuff and then the foot in the gray but uh yeah have to see if i can make it the right weight so I can make it the right length of yarn so I can even make the socks otherwise I might not even be able to make the shaft of the sock and uh, yeah <laughs> we'll just see I might cast on with gray and just do a rolled cuff then the rainbow and then the, the foot of the sock just plans I have but I have so many plans it's like pff, crazy um, for knitting, I'm only working on two projects currently and I haven't spun in a few days, maybe weeks, I'm not sure. Um, I've only focused on my test knit and my cotton summer top. So yeah, I'm stuck in that desert on two bodies and I'm like, ugh. Uh, but I do want to finish them. But in my head it goes like, oh, but I want to cast on self-striping socks, and I want to cast on plain vanilla socks, and I want to cast on fidget socks, and I want to cast on the stitch chair for socks, and I want to cast on a next summer top, and I want to cast on, mm, yeah. Um, right. Then we are at the acquisitions part. And the acquisition part, I split up a bit because there's just too much from the past one and a half month. Um, so I hope to record a knitting update next time and uh, make a few shorter episodes. So the editing isn't that long and uh, the recording isn't that long because I just don't have that much time at the moment. There's just too much stuff going on. The first thing I really want to show you is um, well, this cute little purple sample that I'm absolutely going to try on my uh, soon to come supported spindle. <laughs> and to Haagse Hopjes, um, even though this yarn is uh, coming from, I'm not even sure, is it coming from the US or I think so, or Canada. Far, far away. But they sent me Haagse Hopjes. I can buy that in the store, but it's funny. Um, so this gorgeous braid of Corgi Hill fibers, Corgi Hill farm fiber. Um, it is a 25.5 micron merino and the colorway is called 100s and 1000s. And look at that. Isn't that just yummy? Um, I think it's a bit over 100 grams, it might even be almost 200 grams. I'm not sure. It's uh, pretty heavy and I really, really love it. You feel, yeah, this is definitely more than 100 grams. Um, I won this in the uh, Lazy Stupid Godless monthly thread uh, giveaway. Um, we do a finished objects and then you can uh, win prizes because of uh, the amount of finishes you have. It's in random draw. So if you have one finished object or 20, doesn't matter. You can win with one and you cannot win anything with 20. Um, but I was very lucky. Um, I got to pick my own prize and um, super, super grateful. 
to the person who donated this and let me pick this because wow it's amazing thank you so so much then i have the newest edition of pom pom mag and it is bird themed and even though I'm not very much into this kind of super cropped stuff, I do like that they have a bigger model, but still, I don't look like that. I do not have a flat stomach and I definitely can't get a high-waisted pair of something for myself. I did, however, fell in love with one of the items in here. And it is the Phoenix top. And it is crochet, people. It is crochet. Um, I'll tell you more about that in the next episode where we talk about knitting and maybe crochet. Who knows? And then something that came uh, last month. And it is the April Mystery Sock Club from Yarn and Yarns. So everyone who did not get the April installment of the Mystery Sock Club from Angela, please look away. Uh, I do not want to spoil your surprise. In here was a, a little baggie with some stitch markers, always handy. I have to hide the baggies from Binks because he'll eat them. There is some super goodness English tea store tea. And this is an organic herbal tea with beetroot, carrot, ginger, curry leaves and parsley. Very interesting. Parsley in my tea. And then there is this fries orange cream. A rich dark chocolate with smooth fondant center. Which I'll give to my mom. <laughs> because I'm not into chocolate and orange. I just, I can't even eat it. So, currently I can't even eat chocolate and I cannot eat oranges or any citrus fruit. So, but that's fine. I totally understand <laughs> those packages. But the most important thing, the yarn. And at this time it's Drachenwolle sock yarn. And it is 75% um, wool and 25% polyamide, 420 meters. And it's orange and red and a bit of dark gray. I love it. And this is gonna be probably a pair of really loud screaming, pooling, whatever socks. Um, I'm actually contemplating gifting it to my mom so she can knit a pair of socks and I can send it back to the UK as knitted socks. But Somehow, it's also really pretty yarn, so I'm still on the fence. Um, I do have already a few pairs of socks my mom knit, and I have a pair of myself that I dug up from the sample pile. It's a pair of Sock Madness socks that were just very, very short. <laughs> I, I knit them the shortest as possible for the rules for Sock Madness. And it's a very gorgeous cable lace pair of socks. But I already have like my sleepover socks as a sample pair of socks for shows and such in the same base. So I can just put that pair of socks in the donation pile for the socks for WMAS, the West Midlands Ambulance Service that um, Jeanette is hosting a donation of socks for. Um, then that was not the only stuff Angela sent me because she's the best. Um, there were also two packages of uh, cakes in there. Um, damn, Welsh cakes, thanks. Jeez, my head. Um, you can notice it's a bit warm and I'm already frazzled. It's not even that warm. It's still 10 a.m. in the morning, so it's gonna be a day. Um, she also asked if I was interested uh, during Wonderball to order some special stuff at John Arben. And I have never ordered at John Arben before. And I was like, oh, yeah, I do want to have a look. 
and there's so much pretty stuff. Um, it was a very hard time uh, choosing, but I went with a show special of uh, the Wonder Wall show, and that is this gorgeous red cherry red. Oh, jeez, it's blowing up. Yeah, it's a bit more warm red in real life. It's showing up a bit too orangey and browny and meh, but let me see. Nope. It's not making it better. Um, it is a uh, show special, like I said, and this is 50% organically farmed Falklands Merino and 50% Falklands Corridale. And it is called Brecken My Heart. And the 600 gram is um, scratched through because this is only 100 gram. <laughs> and I guess Angela ordered herself some of the same stuff and just sent 100 gram to me. So thank you very much. And it's really nice and really soft. And I wish I could just throw it on my wheel like now. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so that is that. And then I have one more thing to show you before I'm through the whole pile of stuff. Um, yeah. Um, I am now on Clubhouse. If people need an invite, let me know. Um, especially Dutch people, because the text I can send you. And um, I've noticed that my international texting is very, very expensive. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, I am. Um... Oh, hello. Seriously, Bingst. You are too funny sometimes. Um, so Clubhouse is an app where there are basically rooms where you can chat. Uh, it's a audio chat thing. And um, I've noticed I really like uh, just listening in on some talks. Um, and in other ones, um, the crafty ones, it's also fun to just chat with friends and new friends. Um, about what they are crafting and just craft during it and you don't have to look pretty or put on makeup put on clothes for my my part even uh yeah it's audio based so doesn't matter oh hello um yeah i really enjoyed that but there was a very interesting talk about some very special linen yarn and that linen yarn was available in Lithuania and I couldn't resist. I just had to buy it. So here are three balls of Lithuanian four-ply linen. Um, you can pick your own uh, amount of plies. You have one, two, three and four-ply. And uh, yeah, it is still very sturdy and rough linen. This is Colorway 400 and 11 and I plan to make another outline tee. Um, more about that in the next episode because the pattern will be actually out but I can actually talk about the pattern now. Photos have been out. Um, it was the secret test knit I did for Jessie May and um, I want to knit another one in that gorgeous rough linen. It will bloom gorgeously when it's uh, washed and it will get better after wearing and washing and wearing and washing and every time it will get better um, so it will be stiff as a board while knitting but after that it will get really nice and flowy i couldn't just buy one color so i got myself a 413 as well so a nice red and there are so many colors i mean you don't even see the difference because this is in plastic and it's a really really small difference but the difference is there. So I got myself some linen and I'm going to put this away because Mr. Binks is seeing all the dangly bits. And he wants to chew on everything. And they did not just sell linen, they also sell embroidery sets. And I couldn't help myself. 
I have been in love with this one for a million years, ever since I saw it at iresbordure.nl. But I thought, what am I going to do with it? I don't know. I have so much already. And I was like, yeah, I love it. <laughs> it was on sale. And it made uh, buying something else even better because there was a free shipping sale as well. And I couldn't resist this one either. Uh, this gorgeous red robin on holly in the Christmas tree in the window just stole my heart. Um, I love red robins and this reminds me so much of Christmases in my childhood. We always had holly and we had uh, a Christmas tree looking pretty much like that. And uh, yeah, it just reminded me of my childhood and I had to get it. So I now have two pretty sets of stuff. I am looking at this one and wondering where the threads are because I don't see them. Oh, yeah. They are in this side because this one has them in the back. And the mouse is on Sparkly Aida. <laughs> it is just too cute. I don't think you can see that here. Yeah, I have to look in between, but it's difficult. I think. So yeah, and that is what I get. Got from um, the store. It is yarn stories on Etsy, and super quick shipping from Lithuania to here. Absolutely marvelous. I am very impressed, and um, yeah, very very much impressed. <laughs> It's not good. They have so many gorgeous colors um, and I wanted to buy a shade card but they were sold out and she didn't have any. So I hope next time they will have some and that I know how the fabric works and the gauge and everything so I can buy more of it and make more gorgeous summer tops. Uh, but for now I showed it to you so now I can finally swatch. Um, yeah, life update. I already told you the house is up for sale. We had viewers and we are waiting for the bidding to end. And well, we basically have about two hours. And uh, my mom and I will leave in about an hour and a half. And we will go there by bike because the weather is so good. And uh, yeah, we'll find out. And there is the real estate office. So yeah. Um, not much else going on. I mean, still on my diet, still feeling messed up some days and good some others, so sticking to it. And uh, warm, very warm in the Netherlands. <laughs> How is the weather in your place? Um, we are now definitely in summer and uh, yeah, I'm not a fan, even though it's only 28 degrees. My tolerance is low. <laughs> um, takes some getting used to the weather change, I guess. From 15 degrees, raining, super cold, windy, and bam, hot. It's all or nothing here in the Netherlands, all the time. Um, yeah, I guess with that, I'm gonna say goodbye. Um, I kept it under 30 minutes, which is good. And I hope to see you again next week, actually, already. So, bye bye. I thought I'd try out showing you the whole process of bats spinning to, um, yeah, finished yarn. So, this is all about yarn hand carded bats with Merino and Angelina, 2 times 50 gram. So, I'm going to make a two ply. And look at all that sparkle, all that Angelina. Lots going on there. I am now going to open up the bats, uh, at least the first one. I'm leaving this as is and opening up this one. Here is the opened bat. This is the inside. We will look at the other side. Here's all the sparkle going. Let's flip it over. Yeah, here you can see all the rainbow 
trilobal nylon, I think. Maybe that's rainbow Angelina. I'm not sure. It only says Angelina and Merino. So look how pretty that is. And now I'm going to break this up into strips that I can actually spin. What I did was break it up in like a, a zigzag pattern, as you can see, going there, then going there, going there. And now I'm going to make it all into a neat little ball. And then it's ready to spin. I got my ball of floof and my spinning wheel ready. Leader on it, so. I'm going to start this one. Oh, someone needs attention. Hello? What's wrong? Up, up you go. Oh, hello. Boom. Boom. You want your scratches? You need your scratches. Laia is there. Sunbathing. Yes, you need your attention, and you also need to be in this vlog, eh, mister? Okay, thanks, bye. The first bit of floof has been turned into a single yarn. It is spinning up quite thicker than I am used to, so it's going to be a heavier weight. I'm guessing it might even be a worsted weight once it's done in two ply. But you never know. <laughs> it might poof up, it might not. Um, so we'll see. We have a start. So I have finished the first half. So one little bet is now a bobbin of singles. And this morning I prepared the other bat. I zigzagged it and made it into a big ball. And now I am already spinning it. And as you can see, lots and lots of sparkle. It goes throughout the whole bat. So I'm very curious how that's going to be once it plied up. You can see all the sparkle sticking out even. Um, some sparkle bits didn't want to behave so they aren't fully twisted along the whole uh, uh, single but hey it does look very pretty back with a second full bobbin and all set to start my plying you can see both bobbins side by side. I think that one might have a bit more yardage than this one. This one was a bit more difficult to draft, but we'll see how far we're going to get. And I am going to ply it on this gorgeous bobbin with sheep heads that my husband 3D printed me. So let's see what this will end up being. Almost there. It's gonna be a very close call. As you can see, I'm here, a nice full bobbin. I think they're actually pretty even. But we'll have to wait and see until I'm there. Ta da! One full bobbin. Or, well, only halfway full, but all plied up. And in the end, it was only about a, a meter that was left on the second bobbin, actually. And um, which meant about 50 centimeters uh, held double. So it was super close. Very happy with that. And uh, yeah, I'm going to let it rest now. And then I'm going to make it into a skein, give it a wash. 
and show it to you again.